Today we're talking about the top three exercises that will benefit your tennis game. That's right, not all exercises are, are created equal. And there's so many crazy things out there right now. You see people doing these ridiculous things in the name of sports science and exercise, and it's, it's, a lot of it's ridiculous. Now, on that note, there are things that we see the pros doing that are extreme, and they're not recommended for everybody because they're at the highest end uh, of athleticism and we're gonna end up getting hurt trying to replicate it. So what are the three things that us mere mortals can do? And number one is the spider drill, all right? You maybe remember as a kid, I don't know if it was like a PE thing, but if you ever were in any kind of tennis clinic or academy of sort, it's one of the most popular drills. And unfortunately, as we get older, it's not something that we continue, that we keep up with. And as you can see in the videos, it's all about agility and changing direction. Now, I, I talk to a lot of uh, players and you know, even myself we, you know, that like to run, and we like to run you know, in a straight line. The problem is tennis isn't about moving in a straight line. So yes, that will build up your, your cardio, your endurance, but it's not gonna help with these quick movements. And the spider drill is just that. It's about starting speed and stopping speed. And you see stopping speed is just as important as starting speed in tennis because you've gotta get from one place and then recover back for the next shot. And it's also about your ability to pivot and work on these more drastic angles, not just moving side to side, not just moving front to back, but also in these diagonals. So this is a drill that I think is fantastic. It's one that we should be doing as an adult. If you're a junior and you're not doing it already, you absolutely must. Now, now how do you do it? You're like, Nate, I just get out and I, I just run and do it. There's a number of ways. There's a lot of cool devices out, that, out now that will assist with this, but you can do it the old fashioned way, time it, right? You can do it with a stopwatch, you can do it with uh, your phone, but, but just test yourself. Get out and, and warm up, do you know two to three sets, take a break, do two to three sets, take a break, right? Um, that is how I, I, I would go about it. Um, and then you can combine them with ex ex other exercises. If you only do it once or twice, that's, that's fine too. But that is absolutely, Number one that I would incorporate is working on the spider drill. Now, number two is all about your core and your flexibility through your thoracic spine, all right? And, and here, what you're taking a look at is medicine ball throws. They sound complicated. It's just another thing where it's like, ah, oh, do I need a partner? Maybe not. If you got a brick wall, you can always do medicine ball throws against the wall to catch them. Um, but working with a partner is ideal. Now what this does is it's a lot like tennis. It's about getting rotation. It's about coiling, loading the large muscles, engaging the core, and then really establishing this flexibility through the thoracic spine and then working through the movement and controlling it as you throw the ball to the wall or to your partner. Now you can also do medicine ball slams as you see in the video. These medicine ball slams are incredible for serve power, really loading the legs, using the kinetic chain and creating this, this force down. You, this will help your, your serve a ton. So I love anything with medicine balls, but definitely medicine ball throws. And this can be done off the forehand side or the backhand side. You'll see big, big improvements on explosiveness and developing quick muscle twitch. So just to be clear, not everyone has quick muscle twitch. Sometimes you're born with it, but a lot of times it's through having kind of a pedigree. You're up as an athlete, especially things that require fast movements like throwing, uh, and we develop in, in tennis. Now, if you're an adult and you started playing later in life, you may not have quick muscle twitch, right? And, and this is the ability, like we talk about the elasticity, the snap, right? You can start developing this with medicine ball throws because it starts allowing you to recognize how the big muscles are used in the kinetic chain, and then the arm is simply along for the rod. And number three, and one of my absolute personal favorites, is skipping rope, right? Yeah, old school, but super, super good for you, right? Uh, we will we'll link a video uh, below where we had Mike Duquette, who, who was the number one player out of UVA, number one player in the nation in the 14s, uh, wins over Andy Roddick. Dude is a specimen, and he swears by skipping rope. And, and, and so part of the things in our discussion is Skipping rope is really good for creating foot speed, right? And you can do multiple variations where you're one foot, two feet. It has the ability to teach you how to, to get your feet going, right? 
But not only does it do that, it also creates stability and upper body control because you have to control your hands. And at the end of the day, isn't that what tennis is? It's about moving your feet fast and then also having the ability to keep your hands controlled at the same time. So skipping rope, without a doubt, one of the best. Uh, in fact, when Federer was kind of peak form, about six, seven years into his, his, his uh, career, Everyone was trying to figure out what he was doing, and, and obviously this was a small piece of it, but he was doing something called the gainer, and he was working, this, this exercise was created by a world-class fencer. If you think about fencing, you know, staying low, engaging the core, and then really working through the hands. Basically, he was skipping rope, you know, from two to three minutes, and then doing core for two to three minutes, and then skipping rope, and he would do this for upwards of 30 or 40 minutes, uh, and, and really, really kind of, it's not obviously the reason he was so fit, but it, it played parts of it. You know, there was other things that he did, but Federer was the first to say he really didn't love workouts. He liked to play matches to, to really stay fit, but obviously that wasn't enough. But skipping rope, using the medicine ball, and, and using the spider drill were all things that he incorporated into his routine. You know, the old adage is that you don't get fit to play tennis, you have to get fit to play tennis. But that's just, a lot of times we don't do that it's because it's, it's not fun. And yes, does running in the Peloton, do these things help? Uh, of course, but if we're really looking to take our game up, we, we have to develop other things. We have to get other things into that routine. These three are some of the most accessible, but also the most beneficial for your game. So make sure you give these a go. The spider run, medicine ball throws, and skipping rope. Try them out, leave me some feedback. We'll see you here next time at Player Court. Take care.